Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we have a very special episode because I have a special guest with me, uh, Revan Veerasinghe, who in no particular order is a lawyer, a friend, a YouTuber and an expert in data protection laws. Today we're going to talk about data protection, why it's important and how to go about ensuring that your data is protected. Let's get started. First of all, uh, thank you so much for being on the show, Revan. It's great to have you. Thanks, Maya. It's an uh, absolute pleasure being on the show, especially to talk about a subject that I really am passionate about. So let's jump straight into it. Uh, I think, as we can both agree, data is probably the most important thing in our society today. But if you were to break it down as simply as possible, can we first talk about what is data? Mahela, frankly, I think data is going to be the most important asset class in the world. And frankly, I think data, uh, as we know, we are just at the moment just seeing uh, the tip of the iceberg as to its users, its possibilities and how it will be used in the future. I frankly think, uh, in the words of Clive humbly, it is uh, the new oil and it will drive industries far more than industries have ever been driven before by any other raw material or commodity. Okay. That's the background. But what is data? I think data, if you look at the Cambridge Dictionary uh, definition of what yeah. data is, it's information, especially facts or numbers, collected to be examined and considered and used to help with making decisions. Okay. So I think the importance of data comes from its actual usage. The world now emits data from almost every aspect of our lives and data gets collected uh, and computed far more than ever before. So yes, data is information, but I think in time to come, data would be a very, very important commodity that would be traded. Okay, let's, let's talk about the average person. For an average person, his data is his personal information. So data can be your personal information, like uh, your name, Mahila Nianige, or it can be your address, or it can be a lot more about you. It can be your interactions with the world. It can be your likes, your dislikes, what you eat, what you, the restaurants you go to, the hotels you go to. Everything about you now forms part of your data. And that data, without us realizing, is computed. And then most often, that not there is nothing wrong with it. But let's let's maybe go into the, the intricacies or the, diffi the, the difficult situations that may arise by that data being used in, uh, in a not so nice way. Now, basically there is a data profile of me somewhere out there in the universe. Is that what you're saying? There is not just one data profile. I think each of us, we interact with so many different uh, technological platforms, I would say. Uh, I mean, we, we, we social media. So, social media is yeah. one example, but not just social media. I don't think you should limit data. I mean, everybody, when you think of data protection and data, you think of social media. But yeah. no, you interact with the banks, you interact with the hospitals, you okay. interact with your insurance yeah. company. I share a great part of my life with these apps, my head. Mm -hmm. And I share a lot of information with these apps that sometimes I don't know exactly what I'm sharing. So now with uh, ChatGPT becoming you know, what it is and blowing up, we're talking about AI far more. It's not that it wasn't there, but it if we're talking about it more far more. Do they have the right to take my data? Because we don't subscribe to them taking our data. Now, social media platforms, I can understand, we're voluntarily giving our data. Right. Right? But AI, are we giving them our data? So that's a very good question. Um, I think I think the, the precursor for this is how do they gather our data. Okay. Right? So I'd say that all stems from what we interact with and how we interact with that. I believe in time to come, we will voluntarily give our data away uh, because the use case of a piece of technology will far outweigh our privacy concerns that we would have. Like, okay. for example, at a time where autonomous cars come into play, yes, your location data would be of critical importance. So in, in time to come, I think we will share a lot of data. And, you know, frankly, as some data scientists said, we'll soon live in a nudist colony where we would <laughs> not have privacy as privacy is. But, you know, that is, that is, that is something that we would part with yeah, our privacy yeah. because the gains outweigh the negatives. But right now, are we giving data to these uh, AI networks? Well, well, we are giving a lot of data to various platforms that you and I deal in. In time to come, uh, we need to realize that AI feeds on data that is provided. So if AI is to be a decision maker, and I think in time to come, AI would be you know, a force to reckon with because 
it works all day, it works all night, it doesn't sleep, yeah. it just works. Correct. Right? So we will part with a good portion of our lives and a good per- portion of our businesses to weigh, right? Simply because the benefits outweigh the negatives. Yeah. Right? So I, I believe we will we will ourselves voluntarily pass on that data. But the problem with, with AI, I believe it's it's governed by the data sets that are provided. Correct. And who provides the data sets and what are the data sets they use? Like, for example, is there is profiling, profiling of people a part of this whole, the way an artificial intelligence robot will, will function? Yeah. And if that is the case, Mahela, can we, you and I, be marginalized because we don't fit to a certain criteria of what governs to be a good citizen? And I think there are examples of that, right? There's already examples of uh, AI being biased because of the data sets that have been fed to it. I think we should see AI as being a significant component of what of usage of data, but before even AI, we share so we share so much about data on so many different platforms. Correct. But what do you and I know about the platforms that we share this data with? Correct. Do who owns those different platforms? I, and that's something of been of utmost concern to me. For example, you get a conglomerate of companies. One may do something completely bona fide, mm. one business, right? But then, can they share that data with another business? A part like, of that company, group of companies. Group of companies. Like, for example, can you have a group of companies that own a hospital and an insurance company at the same time? Okay. If that is the case, and they share data amongst each other, can you and I be marginalized based on the rights and privileges that we ordinarily could be entitled to? If our, pri- if our private information about ourselves, like, for example, our health data, gets out. Yeah. Because, I mean, uh, talking about health data, like... We all, most every one of us wear smartwatches or some kind of device uh, and we share all our health metrics with them. And these, I'm assuming, get saved somewhere. Some some company gathers this data and profiles me as a particular individual based on my health metrics. How often do we look at the privacy policies of different apps that we use? Correct, yeah. That we let into our lives. Absolutely. Like, and and more often than not, an update comes and you just give permission for Correct. various aspects Without of our lives. But, yeah. you know, if you, even if you look at a simple thing of the data you have on your phone, we have private pictures, we have... Uh, our contacts, we have our locations, all that's embedded in our phone. Correct. So sooner or later, that data gives a very perfect picture of yourself. Okay, so what you're saying is we will part with our data because it is more beneficial to us than the negatives that it may cause. So I think the negatives is quite understood. We understand the da- danger of giving our data, private data out. If I'm to interject there, I don't think most of us have really thought about the dangers involved okay. in, in privacy violations. Like, for example, I've just written down a few. Yeah. Right? Um, can we be bought into agreement? Now, if someone knows everything about you, Mahela, they would know what to sell you and what not to sell you. I mean, that's what most companies do, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Which is why what brings about the value of data is simply that. The fact that that gives a perfect picture of you. Yeah. But the thing is, no one data application has a perfect picture of you. The issue is if they start sharing data and trading data, then they can get a perfect picture of you and can easily sell you into agreement, be it not just the new pair of shoes that you're going to buy, right? But it can be even your vote. Something else I'd like to share about is, um, uh, is can these platforms be hacked and data be manipulated? Stolen. Not stolen. Well, stolen or if they change the numbers here and there, would you lose out on a privilege that you would otherwise be entitled? Big question. Yeah. Right? Big question is, how do I protect my privacy in this world of AI and where my data is being taken at every corner? Well, I'd say collective, this is a loosely used term, but I'd say collective bargaining will come into play in time to come. Society will realize the value of data and society will realize that data is the most important commodity. And there would be possibly instances like, for example, the Cambridge Analytica scandal where data has been misused. Yeah. That is when society will, will, will step in and say, look, we are drawing boundaries here on how data would be, can would be, be, can be misused. And, and that has happened, which is why GDPR in the, in the EU has come about, the Personal Data Protection Act of Sri Lanka 2022 yeah. was implemented, right? It was simply implemented because it is important. Our privacy is important. Correct. So now that you've touched on the laws, the GDPR and our local act, how do these acts protect our privacy? Okay, so uh, I'd say the important thing with, with the laws is firstly disclosure. Okay. 
terms of any company that abides with the, the laws and uses data in a certain or processes data, gathers data, will disclose to the public at large how they are going to use that data, how they are processing that data, to whom they give access to your data. So okay. if someone is to abide by the data protection law, be it GDPR yeah. or be it even our Sri Lankan personal data protection law, yeah. you have to give a complete picture on what you're going to use that data for. So if they're reprimanded if they don't. So consent, your consent, the data user's consent is forms a very integral component of this whole ecosystem of using someone's data. So in the war for privacy or the battle for one's privacy, there at least you have a complete picture of how this person is, uh, is using your data. So you have more than anything choice to say, look, I'm, I, I do not agree. You opt out. I opt out. Right. I opt out from giving my data. But okay, so that, that for that you have to have a level of knowledge that your data is being taken by these apps. Exactly. That, that, so. exactly. But, but like I said before, I think what's going to happen is that society in time to come with artificial intelligence and you know as we become more and more data centric and yeah. as our lifestyles become far more embedded into usage of data we are going to get a a lot more knowledgeable yeah. as to uh, how data can the flip side of data usage the negative yeah. aspects of data usage and i think society would become a lot more work on standing up for their rights especially in terms of how people use their data. But of course, now, based on what you have just said today, the problem is if the gains that they are giving us is so attractive, will we be willing to sacrifice our data for now, that? If, if you look at it, sadly, I would say that society figures out how they are being manipulated only far down the line. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the, the negative aspects of data usage would only possibly be seen in time to come when there is another Cambridge Analytica scandal mm -hmm. that rocks the known world. Then but people will get... Then people will say, look, our laws need to be amended, we need to put in more laws. Uh, another thing I realized is, I think the world is now getting very switched on to, to uh, the, the possible dangers of misuse of data. For example, I saw uh, a news article put up by uh, this data protection blog that I follow called EDPO, which spoke about now several countries, especially France, has banned their public servants from using a whole list of apps simply because they are not sure whether these apps or well, TikTok, yeah. TikTok yeah. has been highly yeah. highlighted in the news these days because they are not sure whether there are backdoors where well, people easy. can have access to this data. So and where is this data going? So the data protection laws don't cover those? So data protection laws, A, gives the aspect of consent, that but it gives... So consent is key. Consent is key. Yeah. It gives the choice to the user, but it right. gives a great disclosure as to how this data is to be used. Right. How, how would you recommend that a person uh, safeguards their privacy, but also enjoys these applications and these technologies? Well, I believe... Uh, in time to come, people will become a lot more woke, a lot more um, knowledgeable as to the flip side and the negative side of data. So they will take valuable steps to protect their lives. I believe now the discussion is very much at its infancy. But I believe in time to come, my help, you and I and everybody around us, the next generation, will know what their data rights are. And they will question, they will question organizations on how they are using data. Say in time to come, the provisions of the Personal Data Protection Act would be used time and time again when people can use the act to actually question the system and say, look how are you using my personal data. Well, I think we've covered a lot of interesting areas. We've probably just scratched the surface on this. This is probably a far more lengthy discussion to have, uh, which we can hopefully continue one day. Hopefully you got some value out of this episode. Uh, this wraps up today's episode. Uh, thank you again to Revan for being on the show. Uh, it's great to have you. And of course, you can follow Revan on his own YouTube channel where he talks about the blueprint of an innovative company. I'll drop a link in the uh, description for his YouTube page. So please do check it out. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you like this content. I'll see you in another video. Take care. Bye.